What's up, guys and gals? How's it going, dudes? I'm Kosal, your friendly neighborhood dungeon master. During COVID, I decided to get into Dungeons and Dragons. Now my hard drive looks like it should be in Two Mad's computer. Was that too soon? In our last session, our party figured out it's morally wrong to drug the mayor. Who would have guessed? Anyways, welcome to my campaign, The Gambler's Frontier. Enjoy. It's the morning after the uh, events of last night. Uh, you you all sit down. You see Xander sweeping up. I'd got to say that I think it got out of hand last night. I I think that's quite fair. I apologize for trying to force my beliefs on you. I just think that you all um, have the potential for greatness, and I, I hate to see you squander it. Cecil, so I wanted to apologize for my brazen behavior towards our guest. I should have handled uh, the situation with a little bit more finesse. Does anyone know if there's any coffee in this place? I guess I'll go check the kitchen. Yeah, and as you go into the kitchen, you actually notice that Shaw is already up. Probably one of the first ones awake. Making a pot of coffee. Morning, Shaw. DeSantis, how's the morning treating you? Had better. A little rough from last night. You brewing a pot of bean over there? Yes, I am. Would you like a cup? Yes, sir. I'd like two. One for me and the mayor. Sure, here you go. And he, uh, he hands you a pot of coffee. Heard you boys got up to a lot of uh business last night. A lot of small signs of demonic possession. I guess you don't mind if uh me and Layla head out with y'all too then, huh? Not at all. Let's go say morning to everyone. As y'all are going upstairs, somebody comes through the door. A man that you would recognize, Carlos. Carlos? Carlos, where you been? Well, I've been, I've been here. Oh, God. Oh, God. Why, are you, why are you talking like that, Carlos? The strangest thing. So I hit my head chasing a cheese wheel the other day. A cheese wheel? Oh, Carlos, I told you not to go around in damn cheese. You know how it gets you. Smoked Gouda. Oh, I my. couldn't say no. Oh, my goodness. Carlos, you've been missing for hours. The sheriff's got me out here looking for you. Oh, y'all's the fellas out. Oh, Lord. Hello, Carli uh, Carlitos. Um, Sheriff Bryce should have known we came back here. I t told him. The Sheriff Bryce doesn't really put me up through a whole lot of lot of knowledge. Says, it's, says it hurts my head or something too much. Well, I was just checking, and I just I was wondering where you went, Carlos. I, I, I've been here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Carlitos, do you perhaps remember what his original voice sounded like? What, what, what do you mean? Uh, no reason. Why, was he doing something offensive? <laughs> I, um, I, I wouldn't say yes. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to yeah. head upstairs. Oh, <laughs> Carlos, Carlos. <laughs> He wasn't doing nothing offensive. Our mama braised us better than that. Listen, Carlito, I can't help you. I hope he wasn't doing anything offensive like a Hispanic accent. That's why mama gave us these names, because she appreciates Mexican culture so much. Carlito, you know our mother was a whore. But she was she was a whore with a, a heart of gold, Carlos. Carlos, uh, you mind if we have a moment real quick? Of course, Carlito. Uh, would y'all excuse me and my brother real quick, please? Come on, Carlos. And as you, uh, you get outside and your brother turns to you and he takes you by the shoulders. Carlos, what the fuck's going on? Well, Carlito, you know that the sheriff asked me to keep an eye on these folks. The best way to do that is to pretend to be a member of their gang. I just wanted to come and check on you, make sure things are all right. My voice changing like this? That's real. I have no control over that. Yeah, no, you always had that problem. <laughs> you said you did a, you, they said you did a Mexican accent. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Funny shit I ever seen. <laughs> it's funny as fuck. <laughs> the sheriff wanted me to bring you this in case things get a little sticky. You feel like uh, anything comes up, just like this. And he, uh, he hands you a flare. Thank you, Carlito. Keep doing your work here, brother. We're going to get a big payday after this. You go up to the mayor and you see him sitting up in bed. Ah, oh, Cecil, right? Ah, uh, that is correct, Mayor Hemley. Uh, yes, I'm starting to regain some memory. Ah, uh, yes. I brought you some breakfast. Um, you did seem quite worried yesterday evening, um, about your watch. Ah, uh, yes. Um, and he, 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 as you look at him, he looks a little, he gets kind of like a gloomy face. If it's damaged in some way, I, um, I'm quite confident in my ability to fix it. I'm quite good with the clockwork. I'm quite all right, son. It's just uh, a gift I got long ago. Ah, hello, everybody. Hambly. How are you doing, my friend? Fantastic. How about yourself? Morning, Mayor. Morning, DeSantis. Oh, I had I had such a good time when we were playing that game about praying to... What is it? Truth or drink. And you certainly showed us your tolerance last night, Mayor. Ah, uh, yes, I am a, a, quite the stout man myself. 
I, I thank you for bringing me to your domicile. Of course. Well, I was hoping you would, you know, be able to relax a little bit, get a little attention out of the shoulders from having to uh, keep that up, you know, the mayor image up around when you yourself, Ambly, are such a great guy. And uh, you know what? When he's when you say this to him, he almost his eyes look a little wet. Uh, thank you, son. That means a lot to me. You know what? If there's anything you fellas, you boys need in town, please don't don't hesitate to come to me. Uh, let me go, and uh, I think I may go take a bath. If that's fine with you boys. I think I smell vomit on myself. I'm not sure where that came from. Anyways, I'll I'll catch you boys later. I'll be at the uh, the mayor's office if you ever need me. It's right down the street, huh? I'm glad he didn't figure out about you boys tying him up. I think he was a bit too distracted by me sucking his dick the whole time, but I think we're good with everything now, so let's get a move on. I think of what the fuck? As you're walking towards the forest, it's very, very eerie, very spooky. Because as you're going through the forest, you don't really sense a whole lot. Xander, Crawley, as people experience with nature life, usually you would be able to notice, you know, bugs, noise, lots of different noises. But usually you would be able to tell that you, there's, there's more creatures around. But right now you don't really see anything at all as you're walking through this forest. Off the very tinges of the wind, you can smell just a hint of like some sort of tobacco flowing through the wind. Let's go. Dude. Real nature niggas, bro. Real perceptive niggas. As you're walking into the forest, you begin to pick up more hints of this tobacco smell and you hear in the back kind of like a yeah. boys i think what we're hunting might be more human than monster or we could be the ones being hunted well, that tobacco smell right there smells something more along the lines of native tobacco we best respect them woods cecil with your asian yes. expertise um do you have any strategies no i i just really was familiar with the arcane arts out of anyone here probably shot is the most so just putting your weapons up for one but not too far away from you that you can't grab it quickly moving further into the forest you start to hear like a little a drum i think it's avatars <laughs> i hope we see some sexy Sexy water aliens somewhere here. <laughs> a large, strange ladder just suddenly drops from the trees. Uh, Crowley, maybe don't go up that. As you look up, you see a brief light coming from the top of the trees. Are you going to move up the ladder? Uh, you're just kind of standing there. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll move up the ladder. As you're climbing up these ladders, it's very rickety, very shaky. And as you get up closer, you see almost a tent pitched up like a treehouse formation, you know? In fact, it's the first sign of like something made out of an animal that you've seen. And as you're, you're getting closer, you start to smell this tobacco even more. And from inside, you can tell that there seems to be some sort of fire going on from the inside of it. And as you look inside of this, uh, this tent, in the middle of the thing, you see a fireplace that's burning. And in the middle in front of the fire, a man sitting down, cross-legged, smoking out of this pipe. And he seems to be blindfolded. And his hair is a small, little, like, baby raven. Greetings. I have been waiting for you. I am laughs at darkness. That's a badass night. Thank you. You are from out of these lands. Your spirits have spoken of you. You've come to cleanse the lands. I'll follow the will of the, of the nature that speaks to me. Elder, I respectfully request that you tell us your story and the story of your tribe. My tribe no longer exists here since the white man has taken this land. Cecil looks around at all the white people. In order for us to help you, I would like to request the reasoning for why you stayed here. This land cries out, see no animals, correct? Well, beside the, the raven on your head, no, I have not seen any animals. He is special. This land is dying. Are you the ones that can save it? We are the ones that are willing to try. Then you must take the test to see if you are worthy. You all are potential warriors to fight against the evils of this land. This is something that may end your fate if you fail. Well, I'd rather confront fate than run from it any longer. I do not blame you if you choose to leave. Let's get this test on the road. Yeah, fuck it, why not? 
Let's get on with it. Ah, yes, I, uh, I am interested. From his pouch on the side of him, he takes out what appears to be a bunch of different herbs, and he throws it into the fire, creating this smoke that basically envelops the entire tent. And as you're breathing in this smoke, you feel oddly at peace. This smoke begins to envelop your lungs, Xander and Crawley. You feel tears streaming down your, your face. You're pushed back down the, down the tree. The three of you, as you're inhaling this smoke, you feel your, your spirit leaving your body. You see yourself in the sky flying through the town before it was what it was today, you know, probably about 30, 40 years ago. It looks very pristine compared to what it is now. You see animals all across the lands trailing, you know. Eventually, you come to what appears to be a mining site. And the sign on top of the mine says cooked earth mine. You see some people screaming from the inside of it and others running out calling for help. Eventually you come to this very flat plain and begin to sink into the earth until eventually you're confronted by this large earth-like spirit, probably about a hundred feet tall. I am Tachi. Who are you? The name is Cecil, Cecil BH. Nice to meet you, Tachi. I'm known as DeSantis. My name is Carlos. Your spirit is strong to be able to come here. I must ask for your help, warriors. The land around this place is under my protection. But as you can see, it is cursed. What is the, the source of the curse? Somebody is trying to entrap me and make me into their slave. Uses it for his own purpose. But I ask you to find me within the mine and free me. If you do so, you will be generously rewarded. Good deeds do not need rewards. I will help you, Tachin. He looks at the three of you, but it looks like he's squinting at one of you in a very, like, disgustful way. And then all of a sudden, you feel your spirits being called back to your body. The three of you are inside of this tent. Do you see laughs at darkness? He basically takes out his hand and he blows like, it seems like smoke's coming out of his uh, his mouth. As the smoke clears up, you find yourself on the ground where you see Crawley and Xander right next to you. Yeah, as you look up, you see no ladder. You don't see any hints of what was there before. Immediately, you hear a high-pitched scream not too far away from you. <laughs> 